In this video, I'm going to use Property Effector along with Trap Code Particular to create a custom audio visualizer. These examples all derive from the same basic setup. The properties of the particle system were linked to the audio file using Property Effector. Down in the tunnel, Mikey followed the map to a waterfall. Look! The floor is covered with coins! This is the After Effects project with the two visualizers in it. Both of these visualizers are using the same basic setup. They just have a slightly different background color, and the one with the white background has the trails turned on, on particular, so it's leaving not only the main particles, but it's also leaving behind some extra trails to give it more of an inky paint drop sort of look. So let's break this one down and then build it back up piece by piece. So to get back to the beginning, I'm just going to select the Property Effector Control layer Go to the Property Effector panel and hit Remove Effector. This will go through and remove all of the controls and clear out the expressions. With the Property Effector removed, there are no particles visible at any point in the timeline. However, there is still an audio amplitude layer left behind. I can delete this for now. We'll recreate it later. By selecting the particular layer and pressing U twice, it will bring up all the properties that have a value set to something other than the default. By doing this, we can see all the properties that were adjusted to create the visualizer. As mentioned earlier, the first step is to turn your audio data into keyframe data. I already have an audio file in my timeline. By selecting it and pressing L twice, it will bring up the waveform. Right-clicking on the layer, going to Keyframe Assistant, Convert Audio to Keyframes, creates a new layer called Audio Amplitude. If you select it and press U twice, it will bring up all of the keyframes. So here you can see, you have three sets of keyframes that match with the waveform below. The next step in the process is to link these keyframes to the particular effect. I'm going to press U twice to bring up all of the keyframe properties that I want to work with. Let's start with the first one, particles per second. Go over to the property effector panel and hit add effector. Now I have a new property effector control layer, a driver, and a strength adjuster for my particles per second. Now to link this to my audio amplitude, all I need to do is bring up my property effector driver, hold down option and click on the keyframe stopwatch. This will create a new expression. And with that, the expression pick whip. By clicking and dragging the expression pick whip over to one of the audio channel keyframe sliders, I can now link the driver directly to the audio amplitude. All right, not super impressive so far. We just have this little black blob where the emitter is sitting and it's just kind of releasing a handful of particles along with the audio, but it's really hard to tell because, you know, there's just not a lot of visual information coming through at the moment. So, you know, I'm gonna crank this up a little more so the particles really react with the audio. Now I'm just gonna link up some more properties. So I have the position, maybe grab the velocity, uh, the life, size, opacity, color, and hit add effector. Now things should be looking a lot more interesting. Right off the bat, I'm just going to select all these new properties and set them to zero. And you can do them as a group if they're the same type, so all of these will work together. All right, now I can add them in one at a time. So for the position x, y offset, I'm gonna make this like negative 500. So it's just kind of bobbing up and down along the y-axis with the audio. So, all right, we're seeing a little bit there. It's a start. And now let's change the velocity. Put that on like 200, see what that does. No, more? All right, here we go, I'll just crank it up. Starting to get some spread. Change the life, so maybe they're just not living long enough. There we go, see the particles are dying before you actually see them do anything. So we can turn this all the way up to like maybe five. Change the size, maybe make that like 13, 14, 15. So now they get bigger with the audio. Change your opacity. Maybe we want the opacity to be a negative number. And also the color, so I'll just crank this way up. Now you can see they're starting to change, change color. Velocity is too high, so I can just turn that down again. Now we're starting to get slightly more interesting shape. And while I'm working, I'm gonna go to the aux system and turn the emission off. This will just help everything run faster. Then I can turn the trails back on at the end when I get everything else looking the way I like. 
So we're beginning to see some reaction here with the audio, but there's a lot more we can do. I'm going to grab the X, Y, and Z rotation. Maybe grab the, let's grab effect position, scale. Now we'll leave the scale where it is. Now we'll use the scale, why not? And then why not add the spherical field and add the radius. And let's add all of those to the property effector and see what happens. Okay, so it's a little bit messy. Let's just grab all these new properties and zero them out and add them back in one by one. So rotation, let's set this, just the X rotation, set it to like a thousand. So now we should be seeing a slightly more spherical shape. Also, you can crank up the particles per second a little more. This value, I mean, we're getting ridiculously high here, but we're dealing with particles and we're dealing with a low driver value. So I'm just gonna keep kind of cranking this until we get a decently solid look. So there we go, that's starting to look pretty cool. Seeing, kind of getting a ball with bits of stuff flying off it. Starting to get some interesting shapes here. All right, let's keep going. Color. Let's change the color from the default blue to like a hot magenta. Oh, that's crazy. Um, let's go back to the original color. Set that to something like, maybe we'll make this like a darker kind of blue. Let's go to settings. Set colors. Instead of blend, set it to cycle. Now select the color property again. Re-add the, the effector. Now it's going to update the expression. We're going to get a different behavior on the color. So now going back to the property effector controls, if I start affecting the color, we'll see a different pattern as the color cycle. So that's a pretty cool way to dial in some interesting colors and link it to the audio. Let me make this a little bit more kind of red. There we go. All right, cool. What else can we do? A very interesting and powerful property to use is the physics time factor. I've actually set the default value to about 0.6. Now I want to link this into the property factor. I'm just going to set that to zero. Now it'll calculate a lot faster. Now we can dial it in a little more reasonably. So let's set it to something like three. Now you can see we're starting to get much more solid looking bands of particles. Also, let's affect the radius of our spherical field and also the scale of our turbulence field and how much the position is affected. Now let's render a preview and see how it looks. Cool, so that's starting to look interesting, but I think we can do better. It's a little bit wobbly and jittery looking. So I want to affect, I think this position percent is maybe a bit too high. Maybe we don't want to affect the scale so much, so I'll change this to maybe just 0.5. So now the rippling effect is a lot more gentle and less twitchy. All right, getting better. What else can we do? Turn up the physics time factor. I'm also going to crank up the velocity so they have a little more range, maybe even higher. There you go. As you can see, this is a pretty nice way to work. You can just pick a time, start dialing in some of these relationships, sort of scrub around. And like I said, it's more like sculpting than animating. You're not managing a bunch of keyframes. You're instead adjusting a series of relationships. And at this point, I want to turn the trails back on, see how that looks. Using trails will definitely impact your rendering speed, but it does look really cool. Well, hopefully you found this enlightening, and you're well on your way to creating some cool visualizers of your own. I encourage you to head over to aescripts.com to download the trial of Property Effector. Thank you for watching.